Hello and welcome to the Recursion Cafe where we play games from the discard pile. In today's game of Unmatched, we have myself on the left and Dan on the right. I am playing Black Widow. She is a 2 move 13 health fighter with a sidekick called Maria Hill. Both fighters are ranged and she starts with the Moscow Protocol mission card in hand for a 6 card opening hand. Uh, her missions are 5 unique schemes, they each have a requirement and an effect once fulfilled and they will cycle through to the next mission in your deck for a pretty unique play experience as Black Widow. Uh, Dan is piloting Ms. Marvel. She's a solo 2 move fighter with 14 health and is melee. At the start of her turn, she can move at one space and then she can attack from up to two spaces away, ignoring zones, much like the T-Rex. So pretty uh, dynamic matchup. Uh, Ms. Marvel is, is really strong, I think. Um, she moves in and out like a boxer, so I really like that playing style. And then for, in terms of Black Widow, I'm still trying to figure her out. Let's see if I've learned anything from last time's video. So, uh, turn one is a momentous shift from the high ground, but not really, into a feint. So one damage goes through already, uh, highlighting the kind of strength of being able to hit from two spaces away. Notably, I'm not in her zone, so I can't immediately retaliate, which is unfortunate for me. So I'll take some time and double maneuver. Because I had to defend with a card, I had five cards in hand, and of course I'll draw back up to seven. Black Widow really kind of likes having options in hand because her deck is trying to do so many things at once. Uh, Ms. Marvel also likes having a big hand. Some of her cards directly reference the fact that she can have big hands. Not literally, but figuratively in the, uh, in the comics. So it's nice to see the mechanics play off of that. So I will boost with a corner web because uh, Ms. Marvel has moved out of range. I'll take the high ground and I'll hit down with Black Widow. It's hard enough to get these uh, high ground things to trigger against Ms. Marvel as is, so I'll try and make the most of it. It's a 5 value Widow's Bite into a feint, so no effect goes through, but that is 3 damage, so I'm not terribly upset about that. It does leave me directly in range of Ms. Marvel, but sometimes you just have to do that. I think the plus 1 at that point was worth it. We're both at high hand counts, so presumably we both have a good number of options in hand. Uh, Ms. Marvel will take the hop, move out of my zone, but still within range of her stretchy fists, which is a pretty nice play. And it will be a shrink, shrink, shrink into a feint. I knew that she was moving out of my zone. I didn't want any of those uh, card effects to trigger, notably the boost one or the draw one or anything like that. Uh, so it's, it's quite a dangerous spot to be on, actually. Um, and I, for some reason, I keep on returning to it, as we'll see later on in the video. I'll simply maneuver away nonchalantly to Ms. Marvel's starting spot for no reason whatsoever and I'm holding, it looks like, a full hand of cards. So both playing pretty cagey, we both like having a lot of cards in hand, so we're both kind of being quite nice in that regard and letting each other do that. Ms. Marvel will hop and then take a maneuver and consider her options. It looks like she is boosting with her only singleton card, the four value scheme to draw uh, potentially up to seven cards. To get into position for the high ground strike is a boosted fangirl into a widow's kiss which is i think the highest defense i have in my deck so it's a six value fangirl into a four value widow's kiss that's two damage in i'm glad to see the four value four boost value uh, card go but that was still a pretty heavy strike so here's magic Ball sanction uh, but yeah obviously i was in the starting space so i will deal two damage to ms marvel and then find my next mission which will be the Kinshasa Directive, uh, uh, where I have to be in my starting space, forcing my opponent to discard two cards. So that does take an action, however. Um, I accidentally put the, that uh, scheme in the bin. We do fix that in a second, but yeah, just to, just to highlight that. Um, meaning that I'm stuck next to Ms. Marvel and I'll be in range because she can hop. So I decide to boost it with my starting Mot Moscow Protocol mission and use Maria Hill as a body block so that I am definitely out of range of Ms. Marvel. This might be telling that I don't have any defense cards for Black Widow right now. Uh, so Ms. Marvel will take a hop, eat some Euro and fries to recover two health, will gain an action because she has more than four cards in hand. Uh, I am at five cards it looks like. Um, one of them we know is a mission. And Dan is choosing to take the shot at Maria instead. So shrink, shrink, shrink into the acting director of S.H.I.E.L.D. So a lot of stuff happens. Uh, my card will trigger first, so I get to move my fighters up to three spaces and we will recur a scheme. Uh, I, this is where we find out that I had actually put the next mission in the bin. So we put the Magic Report Sanction back into the deck. I do draw the mission that I had. 
uh, I then have to discard a card for shrink, 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 as Dan Dan chooses that option. Usually the more uh, effective one. And I decide to discard the Budapest Gambit. So I'm being, once again, uh, pretty kind of wild with my schemes and just kind of discarding them. But I don't think, I, d I think that was the best option at the time and I didn't think I'd need to draw, or I'd get down to that low of a hand count to be able to draw with the Budapest Gambit. So Dan, playing pretty kind of carefully, just decides to double Nuva, keep his hand count up. Maybe he has another fangirl in hand. Maybe he's looking for the big damage options. I am back at Dan's starting spot, so I will play Magipore Sanction once again, dealing two damage from range. And then we will look for the next uh, mission scheme, except we don't because I reveal that the other two are in my hand and we know two are in the bin. So I have six cards in hand and we know two of them are schemes, which might be quite telling to Dan who might decide to push the tempo at this point. Uh, I am fortunately just out of range of a double attack, so I will force Dan to have to move in, which is something I think I try to do the whole game because I know how dangerous that can be. So there's an embiggen into a double identity. Um, Ms. Marvel is in more zones than I am, so it will be a six value into a three. I decide to let Maria take that, so Maria takes three damage and we have done a swap. But yeah, really strong strike there from, from uh, Dan making use of those zones. So Maria will take the shot back and it is a acting director of shield into a slingshot. So one damage, I'm happy to get any damage I can through. And then of course we do the dance again where my fighters can move up to three spaces and I recur a scheme from um, my discard pile. Slingshot does activate first, so Ms. Marvel will dance over there and I will move, I'll step away and we've kind of reset on opposite sides of the board. So yeah, we're at a bit of an impasse now and then I will simply maneuver and stay and I'll pass the turn to Dan. So at this point, Dan can choose the pressure. I have five cards in hand and he knows one's likely a scheme, uh, but instead decides to recover health and gain an action. So that's, I believe, all of the health gain gone from Dan's deck. They're the only two schemes that heal. And uh, will place himself in a position where he's able to jump to most positions on the board to be able to reach and forcing me to engage. He's notably, yeah, I think I have to like maneuver and boost to get into a zone where I can shoot. Uh, so that was good placement by Dan. So I double maneuver. Again, having cards on my end is not a big, not a terrible thing. I however didn't fully appreciate the, the zone control that uh, Ms. Marvel had and uh, played right into Dan's hands, I think. So now Dan is attacking from outside of my zone and of course it's a big wind up into a corner web. So corner web does absolutely nothing uh, to a during combat effect and so Dan will boost big wind up from a 4 into a 7. So I take 4 damage from this flying fist uh, from, the, from uh, the low ground. I will retaliate by playing the Kinshasa Directive. I am at my starting space again. There was a reason I did go there, thankfully. Uh, and so Dan will discard these two attack cards. Uh, which kind of support each other. One draws cards, one gets bigger, the more cards in hand. And I will find the magical sanction once again and uh, put it in my hand. So there we go. We had, a, we had a decent trade there. I took a whole bunch of damage uh, to, to force some discards and then we'll maneuver. The stocks in Madripoor are going up this game because that scheme, we see that so many times. So Ms. Marvel will dance back over to her starting space, potentially to defend it. Um, I not, I'm not sure there's too many things I can do to take advantage of this. She's in specifically a single zone, I believe, so that I it's quite hard for me to get in to be able to shoot her. Maria will take the high ground, and Black Widow, having boosted in with the Kinshasa Directive, will attack with a fake out. Got him. So it's a slingshot, uh, Ms. Marvel gets to place herself in any space in the zone. Fortunately, she's in a single zone space, so can't, cannot escape uh, the second the follow-up attack because I'm in that gray, gray zone. So I will follow up with Widow and it's the five value Widow Sting into another slingshot. Uh, and again, two movement effects stacked on top of each other. So Ms. Marvel will teleport to any space in the zone, then I will get to move Black Widow three spaces. I think Dan declines and just stays there. So yeah, really, really dynamic uh, back and forth there. Me trying to kind of ward Ms. Marvel off of her starting space, but Dan defended it really well. And now 
we're just evaluating our next steps. So it means Marvel will hop, take a maneuver, and then attack from the low round. Um, could be more or less anything. I do evaluate the options here. We're in this, we're in equal zone spaces, so it can't be in Biggin, or it's unlikely to be in Biggin. We're not in different zones, so I think I just decide it can't be that bad, and it's an easy peasy into a widow's line. So, no damage done. My trigger moves first, I move Ms. Marvel away, and so I don't take the one damage from easy peasy. It would mean I would have a follow-up attack with a plus one, but it would be trading damage, and at this point, Ms. Marvel is up. So I don't think that's necessarily the smartest thing to do. So Maria will take a shot from the high ground, it's quite obvious what that is, and it's acting director of shield into a feint. So Dan chose to take the two damage in order to not let me recur a scheme, which I think is, is pretty fair enough. And so I take a step away, Ms. Marvel will continue hunting us down. She can get caught in between us, but I think that's less of a problem with, with her mobility options and the fact that we're both ranged anyway, it doesn't really make too much of a difference. So uh, she will shoot at Black Widow, is I'm not touching you into double identity. I will immediately swap, Maria will take a damage, and Dan gets his card draw. So in a way, everyone is happy in that sense. So I will maneuver, I'll take a step back to that very familiar starting space and here comes the magical sanction once again. So that is another 2 damage, 2 auto damage to Ms. Marvel and I believe I'm out of schemes and I'm out of acting directors of shields. So that is all the missions complete and from here on out it's just a brawl. Ms. Marvel will take a step in and unfortunately for me I'm on the low ground so Ms. Marvel will get a boost into that attack. Uh, yeah, it's not looking great. I'm on 6 health to 4, but it's a momentous shift boosted to 6 uh, into a double identity. So if I swap here, Maria dies, but I think that's a fair trade at this point. So I'll let Maria take it and leave Black Widow still on 6 health to try and close out the game. So there Ms. Marvel dances out the way and is just kind of like, bring it on really, I have to make it happen because I, uh, I know how hard Ms. Marvel can hit and she's done a, well, Dan's done a great job of keeping her outside of my zones to prevent a double counter attack. So I'll boost in here with a Maria card and we'll attack from right next to her. And it is a Widow Sting into an Embiggen. So I believe that we're in the same number of zones or an equal number of uh, zone spaces. So that is just a three, so two damage goes through and I get to uh, punt <laughs> Ms. Marvel back to the right side of the map. However, given her options and her range, that's still not quite far enough. Um, Ms. Marvel will be able to close and get an attack off. So here's the hop, here's the maneuver, and is firing from that top corner. It seems so far because it's halfway across the map, but it, it is actually only two spaces on this particular map. Um, this could really be anything, it could be a momentous shift, uh, but no, it's a big wind up, uh, which is worse. So it's a 4 into a 3 currently, I will get to move Ms. Marvel but it's not doesn't really matter and uh, Dan will boost with a Fangirl which is less good in the, in the late game. So it's a 6 value into a 3, I take 3 damage. Health totals are 3 and 2, it's really coming down to the wire. So I will maneuver and just step away and make sure I'm sat in a 3 zone space so that um, the wind ups and the embiggens are a lot less likely to be able to trigger effectively. So Dan takes a hop and considers his options. It is getting very tight and the slightest slip can can kind of swing things either way. So yeah, so far a pretty, pretty solid game. And Dan just decides to back off, uh, which is fair enough. He wants that big hand size and he wants the options. And he knows I don't have any missions left to threaten him with. So I will take the high ground, which uh, I seem we haven't learned that is a it, it's a bad idea, but it seemed like the best thing to do at the time, unfortunately. So Dan correctly will boost into that spot where I am out of his zone and uh, it's bad. So now it could be anything. I'm having to consider what options it could be. If it is a big wind up, the last one, then I have to defend. I have a four versatile, but if he has a three boost, then that's me gone. So I, I'll opt to defend with the feint because uh, I figured that's the that's the most likely kind of use case that I lose there. So I'll take the two damage and go down to one, but I do survive. Um, 
because I didn't want to risk if Dan had a three boost. I will maneuver in, I'll attack from the high ground. Uh, I think all of Dan's slingshots are gone so he can't run away. It is a fake out, a boosted fake out into a momentous shift so I will draw a card again in action and that's one defense out of Dan's hand and I'll follow up with another attack from the high ground again and it's a five value widow's bite into a two value shrink 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 for the game. Oof, so that was a super tight game. It came down to one health. Um, and yeah, I'd really recommend uh, anyone out there try this matchup because it's really, really fun. Ms. Marvel, her movement effects, her mobility and how hard she can hit are a good counter to Black Widow trying to dance around the map and complete her missions. Thank you for watching everyone. If you want to support the channel, you can check out the link in the description below to get a coffee from the Recursion Cafe. Otherwise, see you next time.